All right, what's up, everyone? It's me, Drew Manning, your host of the Fit to Fit Fit Experience podcast, and today we're talking about insecurities. And as many of you might know, <laughs> I have insecurities, just like all of you probably. I think we all have insecurities, and one of those things specifically that I'm talking about is my hair. So in this episode, I'm going to be talking about the recent trip I took to Turkey to do a hair transplant surgery. And this is just me speaking from my experience. I'm not trying to promote anyone or anything. I'm just here because I did talk about this publicly on my podcast or on my platform on social media about why I did a hair transplant surgery. And so I wanted to do a podcast now that the hair transplant surgery is over, talk about how the experience was and what I learned from it and how everything went down. And um, ultimately, you know, I, I do want to be transparent about it because honestly, there was a point in time where I was going to try and hide this from you guys because I was ashamed of it. I didn't want anyone to know about it. So I was coming up with creative plans to, okay, how can I come up with a story to tell people why I shaved my head, why I'm in Turkey. Um, And like, I was thinking of all these elaborate ideas. And so I'm going to be talking about in this episode, why I decided to be transparent with it and just own my story, even though it's uncomfortable, even though it's something that's an insecurity of mine. Um, so I'm going to be diving into all that. <clears throat> so if you want to stick around, it's going to be a shorter episode. Um, I'm going to be talking about my hair transplant surgery experience out there in Turkey. And uh, before we do, uh, my, our show sponsors today are, first of all, my Whoop device. And if any of you don't know Whoop, W-H-O-O-P, this right here is the ultimate fitness tracker that I believe from my research is the most accurate in is the most trusted among professional athletes like LeBron James, like Cristiano Ronaldo, um, Steph Curry, um, Patrick Mahomes, uh, Roy McIlroy, like all these high-end athletes use Whoop. Why? Because it tracks. Here's the main reasons why I love Whoop. There's, it, I use it to track my sleep score, which a lot of other fitness devices do as well. Um, it also tracks my recovery score. So like how well I recovered that night. So not just tracking my sleep, but uh, their algorithms base um, my recovery on things like heart rate variability, which is super important for your recovery and your fitness level, uh, your resting heart rate, and like your REM sleep versus your deep sleep versus your light sleep, all those things. And then on top of that, it also tracks my strain score, which is my amount of output I put out that day. But here's where Whoop is different than anyone else is Whoop not just gives you, it doesn't just give you those scores and, and gives you that data. It also coaches you. So it analyzes your data and says, okay, based on your recovery, here's how hard you should push yourself today. Or based on your recovery, if it's low or bad, you should stay in this range for your strain output for the day. And this is why professional athletes or their coaches or trainers use it is because they can say, Hey, you know, based on your recovery, let's not go too hard today. Or, hey, you slept really well last night. We're going to push it to the max today because you you recovered really well last night. And so I think that data and the coaching aspect of Whoop is what sets it apart uh, from all the other fitness trackers out there. So that's why I trust Whoop. If you want to get a free Whoop and a free month's membership, uh, you can go to join.whoop.com. So that's J-O-I-N dot W-H-O-O-P dot com forward slash fit to fat to fit with the number two in between. There will be a link in the show notes. You'll get a free whoop 4.0 plus your first month for free. And I think after that, it's about like 25, 30 bucks per month for all the data. And they do a remarkable job. I just saw Dr. Andrew Huberman uh, have a new feature on there that tracks your stress in real time. So it gives you a score of where your stress levels are at in the moment, which is very interesting, very unique. And I think whoop is just continuing continually coming out with really new features and cool features that are very important for your everyday activities for not just your high-end athletes, but your average moms and dads out there. Um, And so if you want to get a a free Whoop 4.0 device to track your sleep, your recovery, and your strain, uh, go to join.whoop.com forward slash fit to fat to fit. This episode was also brought to you by my supplement company, Complete Wellness, where where we have a full lineup of new products that we just launched a few months ago. Uh, We revamped everything. We changed all the uh, formulas and the flavors. Uh, We have new products. We got rid of some old products like the MCT oil powder and the BHBs. We don't really carry anymore. Um, And we switched over some new products. And we have a lot of really cool, amazing new products out there, you guys. So go to completewellness.com. 
check out the full lineup of products, you'll see that our prices are actually more affordable than before and price very, very competitively. I think you'll be really happy with the new prices, the new ingredients, and the new flavors. They taste freaking amazing, you guys. So go to completewellness.com, uh, show the show sponsor some love. I really appreciate you guys' support. And now let's jump into <laughs> this episode of talking about my hair transplant surgery. So, okay, let's start. Let's start off with talking about my insecurity about why I did this hair transplant surgery. So, as most of us know, um, uh, male pattern hair, uh, sorry, male pattern baldness is mostly genetic. There are some environmental factors. Now, here's the thing. I come from a family of 11 brothers and sisters, and all of my older brothers, there's six of them, five of them, sorry, five older brothers. I'm number seven of the family. I have five older brothers, one older sister. All five of them were bald by their mid to late 20s, okay? And I saw that as a kid, and I'm like, I don't want to go bald. I had a story in my head that I would not look good bald. And so the reason that... um the reason that I <laughs> have always been self-conscious about that is because I saw them go bald. I didn't like it. And so I think in my early 20s, I started using Rogaine and I started using like the laser hair comb thing and Nioxin. I've used Nioxin shampoo and conditioner pretty much, yes, ever since I would say my early 20s. And I, you know, spent a lot of money on these products to maintain my hair. And, you know, in my 20s, kept my hair very thick very full early 30s same thing you couldn't tell mid 30s I think part of it you know I went through divorce (laughs) I left my religion two very stressful moments of my life around 34 35 and then from there my mid 30s to late 30s it started to thin but it was only noticeable to me I'm 42 years old now and before I shaved my head for the hair transplant surgery no one even knew I was balding I did a really, really good job of hiding any kind of bald spots. I would use these fibers, and I like the brand Topic, T-O-P-P-I-K. Um, I used Topic in my hair, and the fibers work like magic, you guys. They were remarkable in covering up the bald spots to the point where no one could tell, unless I got my hair wet or unless I started sweating profusely, where like the the, the wetness and the, the sweat would kind of <laughs> take some of the fibers out and it would drip down my body in these black streaks. And I did not like that. Like if I was doing hot yoga as a single guy in a class with a lot of, you know, beautiful women and like I'm dripping sweat, but then this black stuff was coming off me. It was, I, I tried to hide it and I didn't like that. But it is what it is. And... Like I said, no one even knew that I was balding because I'm six foot two. Not a lot of people are looking down on the crown of my head. And number two, I was always careful and conscious of that. So I would always try and cover it up um, as best as I could. And it got to the point where, like I said, I would do hot yoga and it would, you know, come out. Or if I went in the ocean and got my hair wet, then I would have to, you know, wear a hat for the rest of the day and wait till I got home to, you know, redo my hair and then put the stuff in. And it just became a huge inconvenience. And it would take me a long time to do my hair, to be totally honest with you. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I this this option came up because a member of my family that went to Turkey a couple of years ago had amazing results with their hair transplant surgery success. And I was, like, amazed. And so I reached out to him, talked to him about it, got a feel for what it the, the, the journey entailed, and then asked him for the contact details of the of the service that he used out there in Turkey. And I learned that, you know, I knew that I knew this procedure here in the U S was 10 to 20 grand from what I, my research was. And that's super expensive, of course. And in Turkey, it was less than $2,000. And so I'm like, wow. Okay. So <laughs> less than $2,000 and I get to go to a foreign country where maybe I'll tour around for a few days as well. And so I did my research. I talked to this company called Estee Lux Clinic, E-S-T-E-L-U-X-C-L-I-N-I-C.com. And I'll put a link in the show notes as well if you guys want to reach out to them. Like I said, I don't have any affiliation with them other than like that was the connection that I had. I had a good experience overall. But I'll talk about the experience and what it entails and, and the procedure and all that. And um, so I, I reached out to them, started asking them questions. And then I was, I've been ta- in contact with them for about, 
I would say a year. And I just was kind of like asking questions, curious, but there's no pressure for them. Like, Hey, sign up today. It was like, yeah, just let us know, like book your ticket. Let us know when you're coming out. We'll make it happen. And I'm like, okay. Um, and then finally I was like, you know what? In the summertime, me and my ex-wife, we do two weeks on two weeks off. And, um, so, uh, and so that allowed me time to probably travel out there. Um, and and do the procedure was at a time where i didn't have my girls and so i made the plans to go out there in the summer because it was like you know it was the last i wouldn't have my girls for like two and a half weeks with the way our schedule was working out and i decided to pull the trigger on it you know flights were probably 1500 bucks or so 1500 uh to to istanbul and um i decided to pull decided to pull the trigger on it with this Estee Lux clinic a company I didn't, you know, I, I, like I said, I did do my research. I started looking at other uh, uh, success stories online. I saw videos of how the procedure worked and what it entailed. And basically what they do is they, they remove the hair follicles from the back of your head, kind of in a random pattern. Like it's just, it's not like a line like they used to have to take out where there's a big scar, but they kind of randomly take it, you know, every other follicle out of the back of your, of your head. They did ended up doing 4,000 graphs. And, um, you know, I, I saw these, these videos online of people and, you know, after six months, nine months, 12 months, you see this full head of hair grow back in. And I'm like, yeah, I think I'm ready for that. And I, this is the thing is like, like I had this story in my head that I was afraid that if my shaved my head, cause I've always felt like I had a weird shaped head and I just knew I wasn't going to look good bald. I convinced myself I wasn't going to look good bald. And I was like, you know what, this is my last ditch effort. I'm 42 years old. I'm a single guy. Um, I, I, I and and the other thing is, I remember there was a guy that I used to CrossFit with. I don't remember his name, but I remember him. Probably mid 30s. You know, decent looking guy. I could tell his hair was thinning. And one day he came in a CrossFit with a shaved head, and I didn't recognize him. I'm like, who is that? And then it took me a while. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's that guy. And it just had shocked me so much seeing him go from having hair to a shaved head. I almost didn't recognize him. And I thought it looked so strange. I'm like, I can't, like, I'm 42 years old and I've been on social media. I've created my brand, you know, this whole time I've created my brand with hair. And it's going to be a shock to the world if I shave my head. Like, I can't do this. And so I was starting to come up with ideas like, okay, how can I hide this from my audience? Because I don't want people to know I did this. I, I want to keep it private. And that means I'll have to cover up, I'll create a story and use, like, uh, trick my audience into thinking, like, okay, here's why Drew's shaving his head. And I was thinking of all these elaborate ideas, like, maybe I'll just kind of talk about how I'm, like, going through a midlife crisis and I wanted to see what I look like without a shaved head, or sorry, without hair, and I'm just going to shave my head as an experiment, right? And that's kind of what the story was going to be. But then, you know, someone who's you know, I have a tattoo that says vulnerability is strength and a tattoo that says own your story <laughs> on my forearm. And the more I thought about it, um, the more exhausting it sounded to create a story, wear a mask, lie to my audience, pretend like I never had the surgery. Because that, like I said, no one could tell that I was even balding. And I totally could have pulled this off. I totally could have told you guys that I am just shaving my head as an experiment, see what it looks like and be like, you know what? I didn't like it. I'm going to grow my hair back out. And end of story. And no one probably would have known, but I would have known. And it's just one of those things where I'm like, you know what? <sighs> Who cares? Like, I'm just going to talk about it. And I think people respect that. And I'll, the reason I bring this up is because there's a, a couple that I follow online. They're very popular in the fitness industry, and they're, they're the Hormozies. And I think Layla Hor, Hor, Hormozy, Hormozy, am I saying it right? They, uh, she talked about her plastic surgery. And if you see her face now versus before, she's definitely changed and done surgery. And I don't judge her for that. But what's really cool is, is she talked about transparency and authenticity and owning your story. And she talked, she posted pictures and videos of her face all wrapped up and swollen and all the things. And I have, I had, I had so much more respect for her for talking about it and just bring it up authentically. Like, yeah, this is who I am now. This is why I did it. And I wanted to change my face. And you know what? It is what it is. Like I like, and I like the results and she looks great. She looks amazing by the way. And I have a lot of respect for them as a couple and for what they do with their businesses. And they're very, very smart. And I was like, you know what? That's the type of person that I am, that I am the type of person that owns my story, right? You guys know, I've talked about 
my divorce. You guys know I've talked about my affair. And there's power in owning your story because if you own your story, then your story doesn't end up owning you. And then no one will be like, oh, dude, your hair is fake. You had a transplant. It's like, yeah, I talked about that on this podcast and I, I'm very open about that. So what are you going to do? Make fun of me? <laughs> like, I there is power in owning your story. And so after seeing her, I'm like, you know what? I, and I talked to my good, my best friend, Maui, who's a tattoo artist out in Utah. And I was telling him about my dilemma, like, should I hide it? And he's like, dude, I think people will just respect you so much more. And he's someone I really, really value his opinion. And when he said that, I, I kind of knew in my heart, like, yeah, I'm not going to lie about this or hide this. And so I decided to be open about it and let, tell you guys that, hey, this is me. I have insecurities. I don't like going bald. And this is something I'm going to try and do to change it. And if it doesn't work out, then oh well. So to make a long story short, I did my research. I talked to Estee Lux Clinic. I booked my ticket out there. And um, I was going to a country by myself where I didn't know anyone other than this person that I'd been talking to on WhatsApp and hoping that it would all work out and they would pick me up from the airport take me to my hotel you know i don't know anything about turkey <laughs> other than i've heard amazing things and i know they just had a really devastating earthquake that killed i think tens of thousands of people out there and i don't know the outlay of, or the land of, out in turkey of where it happened where versus where i was going but it sounds like i was in istanbul where it was a safe area and where the earthquake didn't happen and um so I go out there, they pick you up from the airport, they tell you exactly where to go, exactly what to do. They pick you up from the airport, they get you your things, they take you to the hotel, they met me at the hotel. Omar is great to work with, he met me there, speaks perfect English, you know, took me to my room, you know, told us when the procedure was gonna be, I had a few days to go uh, tour around the city and sightsee and do some fun things before I went in for the procedure. And so I, um, you know, was able to tour around Istanbul, go to the bazaar, see some awesome mosques, did some like really touristy things in Istanbul, had some amazing food. The food is amazing. And here's the part about traveling internationally that I love, especially if you're by yourself. And as a guy, it's different than as a girl. I get it. But like for me, I was able to walk around my hotel, find a restaurant, even though I didn't speak the language, it was super uncomfortable because like I... Not everyone speaks English where I was. And I was like trying to communicate with body language and it's 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 difficult and it's very uncomfortable, but it's also like gets you out of your comfort zone. It's like, you know what? I'm just a human. I'm trying to communicate with you. Like, I just want food. I'll pay for it. Where do I sit? You know, and we figured it out and I got food. I didn't die. I didn't starve. And the food was amazing. Everything was amazing there. Um, and so I, I ended up falling in love with the food, the culture, the people, and it was just very unique. Everything was so new. And even just having like some of their beer and some of their fish. I ate a fish eyeball <laughs> and posted it on my Instagram. It was funny. Um, you know, tried some different types of foods. And it was awesome. And then the procedure day came around. And I knew that it was going to be a seven to eight hour procedure. So what's cool is they, you know, obviously they pick you up <clears throat> and you go in and they it's at a hospital. You meet the doctor, you meet the nurses. There's like a team of four nurses and one doctor that kind of meet you there. And like we did a whole little video and talking about like what was going to happen. And then we did some before pictures. They had me like take my uh, hat off and show like the balding on top and like, you know, where it was. And then they shaved my head. And you guys, you know, what's interesting is I shaved my head and I looked way better than I thought it would. To be totally honest with you, I'm like, man, it's not that bad. <laughs> like, actually, it was like, ah, I look pretty good with a shaved head. And I didn't know what I looked good with a shaved head. And this whole time, for four decades, I was like, I'm going to look ugly as with a shaved head. And then they shaved my head. I was like, oh. And a lot of other women agreed with me. To be totally honest, I'm not trying to be egotistical. But I, I posted the picture of my shaved head. And, yeah, there's a lot of women that are like, yeah, you, you still look sexy. You look good. And I was like, see, this is a perfect example of how we suffer more in our head than we do in reality. And this is one of those things where I teach people that all the time. But <laughs> for me, I needed to experience it firsthand. And I did. And so anyways, they shaved my head. And then you go into the, the room, the operating room, or wherever the procedure is. And I lay on my stomach and they kind of cleanse the area and they, they shave it even down even more. So it's like, you know, um, you know, nice and clean. They clean it off and they, you know, you're just laying down in your stomach. You're going to be there for a while. And they 
the heart the most painful part was them injecting the the lidocaine or whatever it is into my scalp so that it would be completely numb and yeah there's some big needles that and they had to do it all over like on top and on the back of my head and um yeah after a few minutes my head was completely numb <laughs> i couldn't feel anything other than i could feel like the pressure of things and things like that and they used this like machine to um extract the follicles and that was like a maybe two th three hour process and i knew it was happening in the back of my head you know it was just like extracting these follicles and just like pulling it out you know from like from right about here all the way to like right about here and i'll post some pictures of it so you can kind of kind of see where the extraction site was on the back of my head and that was like the first half of the procedure and then the second half of the procedure was me i think i laid it on my stomach and they started on the back of my head and kind of started to move forward and then i lay i switched over and laid on my uh, back so i was facing up now and then they did this part the top part and the front and they just what they do is they have these little i don't know like syringe type things that that take each follicle and he would implant it one at a time and basically it took like one second per follicle and he would just like the nurses would would load the gun the little syringe thing and he would take it and boom 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 like just kind of like a staple gun almost and you could feel it i could feel it going into the skin and being implanted like i could hear it each one was like like going into the scalp and you know one by one four thousand grafts <laughs> and um like I said, I was pretty comfortable the whole time. Like I didn't feel any pain or any discomfort really the whole procedure. And like I said, it took about seven hours. I will say the last 30 or 40 minutes, the lidocaine started to wear off. And I have a pretty high pain tolerance. So I was like, you know what, let's just push through it. We're almost done. But I was like, oh, this is start. And I could start to feel the pain come on. And it felt like my head was going to explode. I was like, it had like the worst headache and I was just like so much pressure on my scalp and it felt like I had been stabbed a thousand times in my head. Right. And, um, so I just had to like go to like a, uh, a, 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 a deep place in my head to push through the pain. And I, I've, I've been, you know, I've got my whole body tattooed. So I've had painful experiences where i'm like okay this is the pain that i'm just gonna have to endure um until it's over and that, that was the only uncomfortable part was like okay like taking some deep breaths working out my breath and just like meditating through the rest of the 30 minutes until the pain i mean it got more and more intense i'm not gonna lie like the pain got more and more intense <laughs> with with um the procedure being done and like the lidocaine wearing off and um, you know, he went through the whole procedure of like, okay, here's what to do. Here's what not to do. Here's how to clean it. Here's how to sleep. Here's how to shower. Here's how to, you know, take these pain pills and take these antibiotics and all these things that you got to do for the, the, the self-care aspect of it. And this was around like 5 PM and I have to drive about 30 minutes back to my hotel. I have this headband on, right. And then these, these bandages on the back of my head where they extracted it, you know, cause that part was definitely bleeding up here wasn't bleeding so much it was it wasn't like oozing blood but the back they had definitely had to patch up and these bandages were on the back of my head and i couldn't wash it or clean it for two days i went back in this was a friday and i went back in on a sunday for a cleaning and so i went back to my hotel room I definitely was in a lot of pain took some of the pain pills that they gave me ate some food finally took some of the antibiotics and tried to get some sleep that night but you have to sleep elevated and you can't sleep with like anything on the back of your head or the top of your head so i had to roll up a towel sitting up in my bed and then it couldn't turn on my side or my front and i just don't sleep well in that position so basically it was a long freaking night you guys like really long did not sleep probably at all that night um and then the next day i just laid in my hotel room i my goal was just to lay there and rest and recover didn't really move a whole lot you know, caught up on some reading, some social media posts, some emails, some shows, and just laid in bed the next day. And then Sunday morning, they came and picked me up, brought me back to the hospital. And this is where it was definitely painful um, for them to take the bandages off, right? And so it was like ripping, you know, the bandages, which were stuck to the back of my head, and it had bled through, of course, and they had to like 
oh man and in my head was swollen by this time i <laughs> look like chunk from uh the goonies you know just like this big swollen head luckily the band around my head kind of kept the swelling from coming down but i was trying to like push the swelling back this way and like behind my neck behind the back to the back of my head so the swelling wouldn't come down but um most of it luckily did not come down into my face it kind of on the sides of my head and you know the back was definitely swollen so uh we're not looking my best or my sexiest but it's part of the recovery process so they go in they wash it they clean it um they give me some protocols of like um some shampoos and some uh, foam to kind of rub on it and like you know it's gonna it's gonna scab over on top of course and he's like use this to clean the scabs off after so many days and like all these things that i had to remember to do for the first 12 days is like a lot to remember but what's cool is he sent me the detailed list of exactly what to do every single day when when to use this product when to use this product and like all the things and like you know you can't work out for a month you can't have sex or you know, any kind of sexual activity for a week afterwards. Uh, you can't get out in the sun for about a month. Um, all these things, uh, you know, you can, can't wear a hat too. And so I'm like, shoot, well, how am I going to do this? Like, you know, I, I'm, I still have a few days left here where I'm going to tour around. Um, I also uh, was planning on meeting my brother in Belgium and Amsterdam and Germany uh, for two weeks later. <laughs> and so I had to meet up with my brother in Belgium and we toured around like other countries and so i was like trying not to be out in the sun but also trying not to wear a hat and so sometimes i would wear a beanie that loose beanie that didn't like pull on the the follicles because they're very delicate so i definitely sometimes would wear that to keep it you know from like from the sun getting on it um it was pretty difficult uh but i i managed to i feel like i did a good job of like taking care of it um, and the swelling went down, the pain kind of eventually went away. I started sleeping better throughout the night. Um, I think for like the first week you got to sleep elevated and after that you can kind of sleep normal. But, um, it, it, yeah, I did not sleep well the whole time I was there because the time change and just, <laughs> I wasn't there to sleep. I was there to tour around and have a great time. And I had a freaking amazing time, even though I had a bald head, even though I looked weird and deformed for a little bit, um, it eventually recovered and you know all in all my experience was pretty positive with the experience i didn't have any complaints or anything like that um i think the more questions you ask the better and I, what's interesting i've had dozens dozens if not like a hundred people or so reach out and ask questions like you know all the time asking about my hair transplant and it, it was surprising there's a lot of men out there that probably want this type of procedure that are interested in this procedure because male pattern baldness is something that some of us have to deal with. And, you know, like I said, some of it's genetic, some of it's epigenetic and what, for whatever reason, you know, our culture, our society values, you know, a, a full head of hair and it looks good. And without hair, sometimes some people can pull it off like the rock, Jason Statham, Ben Diesel, just to name a few. And for me, I was like, I, I'm not going to look good, <laughs> you know. But anyways, it, it was a very interesting experience. And now here I am, about 21, 22 days back into my recovery. I look like this now. It's starting to grow back in. So a lot of people tell me they still like it. You know, on, on top, it's going to take a full 9 to 12 months to fully grow back in thicker. So like you can still see it's kind of thinning. Uh, or it's not thinning. It's just thinner right here in the middle. Um, but you know, I'm going to see what it looks like. And worst case scenario, if it doesn't look good, if it sucks, then I'm going to shave it. And then I know I'm, I don't look horrible with a shaved head. So that is my hair transplant surgery. Would I do it again? Yes, I would. Um, but you know, that's the thing is like it, it, everything comes with cost. Traveling to Turkey is far away for a lot of people. Um, the airfare is expensive, of course, but you're paying less than a 10th of what it costs here and the US, but you're traveling to a different country where you don't know people, you don't know the language, but I would say it's pretty safe. And a lot of people from around the world travel to Turkey for nose jobs, hair transplant surgeries, liposuction, tummy tucks, like all the things. And from what I can tell, it's pretty safe. You know, you're not doing this in a back alley. This is a pretty legit service that they, you know, cater to a lot of, um, you know, Americans that don't want to pay the the price tag of $20,000. So 
anyways, and I, like that's the thing is I don't know if it's guaranteed to work for everyone. I don't know what the percentages are, but I think it's a pretty high percentage of, of hair that eventually catches on and takes and, and eventually does really well. So um, anyways, um, I'm open to answering any questions you guys have. Just reach out to me on Instagram. Just DM me at fit to fat to fit. And, you know, I think at the end of the day, it, I learned a lot of valuable lessons from this experience. And, you know, when they shaved my head, for example, I'm like, man, I, I actually don't look bad with a shaved head. But I already spent the two grand. <laughs> I couldn't, like, back out now. <laughs> um, but I wish I would have shaved my head before just to see what it looked like. And I wish I had, I, yeah, I wish I would have just, you know, um, maybe taken that leap of faith to say, hey, do I really want to shave my head? Or do I really want, do I really know I'm going to look bad with the shaved head, right? Is it going to be as bad in reality as it is in my head? And I think that's a question people can ask themselves. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, people might judge me for doing this type of procedure. People might judge me for, you know, let's say I do Botox or let's say one day I do TRT, right? Because I'm sure at some point I will, you know, if I, if I feel like I'm losing my libido, my vitality, my youth or whatever, you know, I'm open to trying something like that. And I think we all do certain things to customize this avatar, this body that we have to fit in or to look a certain way. And what I mean by that, and, you know, I'm not judging anyone, but, you know, sometimes we wear makeup, sometimes we wear clothes that make us look a certain way. Sometimes we do our hair to make us look a certain way to fit in or to like the way we look, or sometimes some of us exercise to shape our body to fit in and, and look a certain way. And so we all do things, uh, you know, pretty much everyone, pretty much everyone does something to their physical body, their appearance to fit into society. And yeah, there are people that just don't care. There's a lot of hippies that live here in Hawaii that just like, I don't care about my body hair. I don't care about my armpit hair. I don't care about my makeup. I don't care about smelling good. And they just don't care. And that's ultimate. I would say that is like the ultimate freedom of just not caring. But for me, like I do want to not stink, <laughs> you know, so I shower every day. I brush my teeth. I wear clothes that I think make me look a certain way. And I think, yeah, it's one thing to not care what other people think. It's another thing to not care what most people think about you to a certain degree. And I think we all have our limits, right? Like, I'm not going to go around just pooping in public because I don't care what other people think. Or I'm not just going to go around, you know, peeing on people because I'm like, I don't care. I'm just going to do whatever I want, right? I think there's certain limits and we all have limits. And that's probably not the best example, so I apologize. But, you know, um, I'm okay with this. For me, that was my biggest insecurity. I'm going to give this a try and see how it goes. And we'll see. I'll keep you guys posted on my journey. But I wanted to do a short little podcast talking about my hair transplant surgery because I've had so many questions about it. I've had so many comments and people like, you know, asking my opinion, like, would I do it again or asking me so many things. And so if you guys do want to go check out, there's there's hundreds of services out there in Turkey that do this. Este Lux Clinic is one of them. It's the only one I know of. It's the only one I've had an experience with. But I've seen online dozens if not hundreds of other companies that do this so do your research check out sda lux clinic you know if it feels right to you then then cool there's no judgment for me um and uh, yeah I, I i do know that you know i have my own insecurities this is one of those things that i'm uh, willing to pay some money to try and fix and you know i don't judge other people for pulling the trigger on things that they want to do to their bodies to customize their bodies the way they feel is right for them. And um, yeah, that's my journey. That's my experience. Thank you guys for listening. Um, yeah, more more episodes, more content to come. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, sending you guys nothing but love, respect, and aloha to you and your families. And we'll talk to you guys next time.